things around. Their record now 3-4-1, and one, and it could be a lot better than that. Here they are in action last week against Minnesota. Lynn Dickey, the quarterback, healthy, getting the good quick drops, and he's got fine people at the talented positions. This is Andre Thompson from East Texas State, getting a block from Mr. Lofton, who's also a great outside receiver. On the other hand, the Steelers under Chuck Knoll have folded and faded just a, a little bit. Their record now is four and four. Cliff Stout started last week against Cleveland, and here he is to Theo Bell. Theo Bell from Arizona, two back-to-back 100-yard -back receiving afternoons. One of those great deep uh, members of that receiving core, even with Stallworth and Swan Hurt, the Steelers can still throw it. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. They say the Steelers are too old to play anymore. They say they've lost their desire. They think that uh, this won't be a Super Bowl year. But Joe Green has some very interesting things to say to you, didn't he? He did, Pat. Actually, the last time we saw Pittsburgh was the fourth quarter in Pasadena. The intensity level was way up here. And I asked Joe Green, the team only has 10 sacks right now, if the Steelers can get back to that great high level. Here was his answer. Tom, I'm a firm believer in, in character. Uh, We've been out front for a number of years, uh, which really has no bearing on this, but I think the true character of any body or football team really comes out when the times are tough. And the times are tough right now, and uh, really, I'm kind of looking forward to it and see how well the men of character on this football team perform. Does it get your attention when he says it, doesn't it? certainly will. He mentioned the word character. One of the classiest characters, I guess, anywhere in pro football or anywhere is Bart Starr of the Packers. You talked to Bart, didn't you? I asked him if he thought, indeed, the, the Steelers might be getting a little too old and a little tired. Here's what he had to say. <laughs> they don't show that they're getting older to us. In fact, they're still number three in their conference against the rush. I think they've had, quite frankly, some very fortunate plays occur against them by their recent opponents. Now, we've found them to be extremely difficult on film. We know that having lost three consecutive games, they're going to be very, very tough at home, and we've prepared for a very, very tough game ourselves. And that tough game is just about to get underway as Barr will kick it off for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mark Lee, number 22, back for the Packers. And Barr has not been getting the very deep kickoff. Most people have been getting the ball in possession around the 25, 35-yard line against the Steelers to start with. And look where Lee is standing right now, all the way up at the 10-yard line. He won't have a chance to handle this one. Harlan Huckleby lets it bounce, and it goes out of bounds at about the one-yard line. They'll bring it back and do it all over again. I told you the kickers can do it. These days, the kickers are under a lot of pressure. Always were. <laughs> it just seems we notice it so much now. <laughs> Young Barr has had uh, three missed extra points this year, and two of those were in losses where the team lost by one point. Including last week against Cleveland. They have not lost four games in a row since 1969, which was, incidentally, Chuck Knoll's first year here. The next year he drafted Mean Joe Green, number one, and they were off and running and tackling. A little bit later on, they got a guy named Bradshaw and another guy named Franco Harris. Through, so, through Jack Hams along the way, and they built a pretty good team, didn't they? One of the injured members today played a very vital role in their great success, too. Jack Lambert, the middle linebacker. Here is Barr. From the 30 this time. Lee all the way up at the 11. Better kick. This is Mark Lee back at the 8. To the 25. Calvin Sweeney made the tackle for the Steelers. We'll set the offensive lineup for you in just a second. And here it is right now. And they are getting better every week. Stokes, Goforth, McCarran, the veteran center. Harris and Cook, both from Arkansas. And Kaufman, a very underrated tight end. The quarterback is Lynn Dickey, Eddie Lee Ivory, the halfback, Ellis, the fullback, Lofton and Thompson, two good ones on the outside. Lofton has perhaps as much potential as any receiver on the field today, and that takes in a lot. Ball at the 26. First and 10 Green Bay, Lynn Dickey, quarterback with Thompson in motion. And off is the Ivory. Had a little daylight for a moment before Jack Lambert made the tackle. Elsie Greenwood helped. Here's the defense. Greenwood, Joe Green, Steve Furness, Furness, if you want, and Dwight White, who's getting his first start, I think, in a couple of years, really, at right defensive end. Am Watson and Cole. We said Lambert. I didn't think Lambert was supposed to play, and he's not. I think that's Dirk Winston at the middle, number 53. Right. Ellis.
Ellis wide to the left. That's the Pittsburgh defense we've become used to seeing. Great pursuit. A great play by Dwight White, number 78. He got to the outside very quickly from the defensive end spot. Again, they've had a lot of injuries, and they just haven't had pressure on the pass. Look at 78. Plays off the tackle, gets help, though, and that's what they haven't been getting is pursuit. If the Steelers start getting four or five black shirts around there, you'll know they're hitting again. So it'll be third and nine for Lynn Dickey and perhaps his first pass of the day. Line of scrimmage back at the 28. Dickey has been hot the last four weeks. Three wide receivers, Ron Cassidy in the game. Lofton in motion, and he heads up field as Dickey drops. Tries to lob it over the head to Eddie Lee. Ivory, but too far. And L.C. Greenwood made the play. He still stands very tall. Came across, got his arms up. And Dickey had to sort of dump it beyond Ivory, who had gotten into the flat. Remember, Dickey had a 400 and some odd yard passing day against Tampa Bay. So if you don't get that kind of heat on him, uh, he can sort of light the fire sometimes. Been playing with a lot more confidence in recent weeks. David Beverly will kick for Green Bay. And Theo Bell, very, very dangerous, will come back for Pittsburgh. Beverly's been very effective at getting the ball out of bounds down inside the 20. Ooh. Hurry with this one. Might as well just let it go out of the end zone. And save six. And concede two. Safety. Advantage, Pittsburgh. The safety, of course, will bring a, a fair kick out, a free kick. And Pittsburgh will be in pretty good shape moving down. This was 20 feet over his head. Who is the snapper? Island. That's the spaceship, all right. Oh, to have Lofton back there for that. How would you like to give him a psychiatric test when he's going back there to try to figure out to fall on it or get it out of the end zone? Bart Starr obviously alarmed about that state of affairs. Here is the snap again. She has no chance. Yeah, and your whole life does pass before you very quickly. David Beverly's dilemma. First safety by the Steelers since 1976. In that case, it was a block punt by Lauren Taves that went out of the end zone. This one just rolled out. I would imagine they'll let Beverly probably punt it. He has the choice of either placing it on the tee and and uh, having Bernie kick it, who is probably not the longest range kicker, or a punt. But the catch to place kicking is you cannot use a tee after a safety. So that's why they usually do punt it. Oh, I see. You gotta play fair on that one, huh? You gotta have somebody hold it, just like on a field goal. I've seen teams get away with it. I've seldom seen a safety not followed by a touchdown or a field goal. The team that gets the safety usually comes down and gets something on the board. It should be Theo Bell back deep. And Beverly hangs a good one. Bell chased back to the 23, and here he comes. Penalty marker goes down as Fred Nixon made the tackle for Green Bay. He was the first man to hit Bell. This may cost Pittsburgh. Looked like it was on the block, maybe holding. It'll be holding against Pittsburgh, so the great field position has been nullified somewhat. Referee is our buddy Ben Dreith. Bobby Boylston's the umpire. Dale Williams, the head linesman. Bill Reynolds, the line judge. The veteran Stan Javi, the back judge. Ed Ward, the side Hunter judge. back, number 62, holding. Tunch Ilkin. That's correct. He was the uh, fellow that was born in Istanbul, Turkey, right? Right. And so the Steelers with Terry Bradshaw after taking last week off. Under the center at quarterback with Franco Harris and Sid Thornton. Back deep. Thornton in place of Hawthorne. Harris burrows for a couple, nothing more. Harris. Green Bay anticipated that the Steelers might come out with that quick, quick trap series because Franco Harris is available for duty. That time it looked like they tried the inside trap and even this great offensive line couldn't handle it. John Kolb, who's been there for 12 years. Penny, who can play anywhere along the line of scrimmage. The best maybe in football, Mike Webster. The young rookie, McGriff. Larry Brown, and of course, the underrated Randy Grossman. He's a tight end. Bradshaw, the quarterback. Thornton, Harris, the two runners. T-Bell and Smith, the wide receiver. Stallworth and Swan still out. This is Thornton. Sidney cuts up for about five. John Anderson made the tackle. He was the first one to make contact. 
George Cumbie got in there too, the rookie linebacker out of Oklahoma, who's small but very, very quick and a good tackler. Here it is, they're playing the 34 this year for the first time. Big Mike Butler from Kansas. Jimmy Osborne at offensive uh, nose man. I don't believe uh, that is the Green Bay defensive lineup. It's actually Johnson at the nose and Ezra Johnson at the other defensive end. We had a couple of bears in there unintentionally. They, they're not welcome here today, I don't <laughs> think. Third and four. Bradshaw surveying things, three wide receivers. Bradshaw looking. Pass caught by Smith. And Swan entered the game and put some extra pressure on the Green Bay defense. That time, uh, Lynn Swan did come in for the first three receiver shot. Now, Whispering Smith, I call him, has all the receiving records at Michigan, uh, touchdowns, uh, average per catch. He doesn't have the number, but he has all the TDs and all. He's a great receiver, got good control, and has really been just standing around waiting for somebody to perhaps give him a chance to play. He's a great one. Turner made the tackle, first down Pittsburgh, the ball at the 45, no scorers yet. with one of those patented quick trucks stopped by Anderson again. He's got to average 68 yards a game the remainder of the season to hit 9,000. Only two other people have ever done that at this stage of the career, Mr. O.J. Simpson and Jimmy Brown. That's rather an elite group, isn't it? How did Jim Taylor stay out of that? He's right there close. He's number four, I think. Second and seven. Of Bradshaw under Webster. Like he can't wait. Rango Harris crosses the 50 into Green Bay territory. And the best uh, third down conversion team in football are the Pittsburgh Steelers, usually because they're going on third and two or third and three. That time we were looking at Bradshaw's hands perhaps to see if the right thumb is all right. He was injured in the Oakland game. The thumb sat out last week. I watched him throw yesterday and today, and he threw nothing but the very tight, hard spiral that he's noted for. So I think he's 100%. It's third and three, and again, the three wide receivers, including Lynn Swan, end of the game. Shaw with a lot of time, intended for T. Bell, knocked down by Johnny Gray. Great defensive play. That time, Bradshaw had a lot of time, a little bit of late pressure on him. That was just a real good play. That young secondary has been working very hard under Mr. Fichtner, Ross Fichtner, and they have to go man to man a lot, but they're not afraid, even though it's, it's like double jeopardy for you. It's tough. Greg Colquitt has averaged 38 and a half yards. He's had his left foot banged up, too. He got it jammed the other day, and that left foot's important for a punter, you know? Fred Nixon back deep for Green Bay. It is very important. Ooh. Catches a good one away from Nixon, going for the sideline, and almost missed by about a half a yard, pinning Green Bay back at their own one. He'll bring it out to the 20. A lot of kicking going on. Nothing the score. Steelers over the Packers. At Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, you're looking into the Steeler defensive unit. And that is Joe Green, who has had so many spectacular great years here. The spokesman and the center of attention. Look at this formation. A lone setback is Ellis. Lofton swings in motion to the left. And Lynn Dickey will throw on first down if he has time. And to Thompson. That'll be enough for a Green Bay first down. Ron Johnson pushed him out. A real good-looking formation. They went from the up count and throw it on first down. According to Cleveland's a good idea. They did it 21 times last week on first down, throwing the ball against the Steeler defense. The Steelers said they end up playing first down like it was third down before the game was over. That is a good idea. <laughs> Here's Joe Green against McCarron, the offensive center. Gets some help from Harris. They handle it. Ellis with no place to go is rocked backwards by Dennis Winston. And Jack Ham also moved so fast on the running play, he was actually on the Green Bay side of the line of scrimmage. 
Kansas City 3 nothing over Baltimore. Lowry field goal of 27 yards puts them ahead. Remember that used to be Stennerud? For a long, long time, San Diego 7, Cincinnati nothing. It'll be second and 12 here at Three Rivers Stadium. 2 nothing. Steelers safety has given him the early lead. Lofton in motion to the left this time. Green with the pressure, but Ellis makes the catch. Cuts back to the inside. They'll get about four or five. Beasley made the tackle. Good recovery by Robin Cole. That play could have gone for 40 yards. A perfect call, because this time they went from a trips formation, put the man in motion, Lofton making a double wing. Watch the big pressure by Pittsburgh in a hurry by Joe Green and company. This is the rookie, first-year man out of Missouri. He's more than a free agent. He's a fine-looking uh, quality football player, 222 pounds. He was with the Rams. The Rams had such an abundance of running backs. They had to let him go. The Packers have been watching for a long time for him to become available. They think he's a player. Three wide receivers in the game for Green Bay. Ron Cassidy, the extra one. Dickey. Batted down by L.C. Greenwood, intended for Ellis. That's a good pass defense. When your defensive ends are six, six and a half, it's not bad. Here's what's happening on the line of scrimmage. Joe Green playing at 260 in tennis, 275 now. And I'm telling you, the Steelers this time look like they're coming. They got penetration, stayed with it, and LC made the spike. The old Bell back deep. Pittsburgh and David Beverly. Hoping he has a chance this time to kick it. Good snap. Almost blocked from the outside by Ron Johnson. Bell looking for some blockers. Finds some, and now he's got a little bit of a wall. The Packers close it down. 35-yard kick. Stopped by John Anderson. You know who coaches the Steelers special teams? Chuck Knoll himself still likes to go out and say, here's how we're going to run it back. He says when he's through coaching, he'd like to be remembered as one of the great teachers. That would satisfy him. I'm learning. Pittsburgh 2, Green Bay nothing. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. And Patrick, remember the Steelers are still scoring 27 points average a game. Franco Harris. Barrel straight ahead for about three or four. Mike Douglas was the first Packer to hit him. Check out Mike Webster. Webster is the center that uh, Noel drafted because of his shortness and strength. He's only about 5'11", 265, with arms like tree trunks. Did a pretty good job against Johnson, the nose man, and just got Franco over the stripe. But Webster sort of epitomizes the offensive line for the Steelers. Get low, drive hard, and protect this person. This person being Terry Bradshaw on second and seven. Ryan Eskrovitz is Steeler 46. The Packers fake a blitz and then back out of it into the regular 3-4. Jennifer for Grossman. Bradshaw had a hurry. Burt Jones has hit Reese McCall with a touchdown pass, and the Colts have taken the lead from Kansas City 7-3. Pretty good defense against the quick pass. Uh, Bradshaw thought the fake into the line would make those four linebackers back there take a false step. Nobody moved, and they were really ready for Grossman. That is our director's favorite player. <laughs> Sandy and Randy Grossman, right? right. <laughs> Third and seven. Lynn Swan enters the contest, and Bradshaw looks like he's uh, working with an automatic right now. Straight back. Lots of time. Bradshaw has his pass picked off by Wiley Turner. Back to the 40. Cuts back. Penalty marker down as Turner gets into Steeler territory. Sidney Thornton made the tackle, but flags are down all over the place. And what you always hear about Bradshaw when you're talking to football people is he'll throw a lot of touchdowns, and he will throw into double and triple coverage. He will force it. You know, when your people can jump over people and catch it, you get away with it. This time, the Packers uh, played it perfectly. That was the 10th interception of the year for Terry. Clipping penalty is going to be called against the Pack. Turner's second INT, too. He looked like he was going to run it back. He didn't look like somebody that was just looking for somewhere to fall. He's the extra Personal defensive foul, back. Clipping on the run back, a number 38. 
Estes Hood is number 38 for the Packers. Well, that's his buddy in the backfield. Of course he helped him out. <laughs> right. It is still 2-0 Pittsburgh. The Packers have the football now after that interception. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at three different stadium in Pittsburgh where the Steelers lead the Packers 2-0. He, of course, is still the pack quarterback. Paul Kaufman in motion this time as Eddie Lee Ivory looks straight ahead. Bounces around and does awfully well to make four or five yards out of that miss. Eddie Lee out of Georgia Tech. Wagner made the stop from the safety spot. He weighs about 209 pounds, but he, the tailback just doesn't look that big, number 40. Watch him cut. It's a weak side running play. I'll tell you, Pittsburgh just flowed into it beautifully. But Dirk Winston couldn't hang on to Ivory. He's got those good, quick legs, doesn't he? He got four, so make it second and six at the 34. Steve Atkins in the backfield now with Ivory. Hoffman again in motion. Vicky straight back. Pass complete to the motion man, I believe, Kaufman, the tight end. Yeah. Kaufman uh, staggered out of Kansas State one day in spring training, and the scouts were actually down uh, looking for someone else at Kansas State. And they asked Kaufman, what, what are you? And they said, a tight end. He said, would you like to play football? He's a very, very good one. Surprising Buffalo leading Atlanta 7-0. That's a first quarter score. Those two teams tied for first place in their divisions. Dickey is 3 of 5 for 24 yards. Packer first down out at the 43. Again, it's Kaufman on the move. The handoff is to Atkins. He's got very little room and struggles for a couple. Dennis Winston again, the tackler. Boy, L.C. Greenwood played it, too. At the point of attack right now, the Steelers are really very heavy. They're a load. They're finding out where you're going. Watch right in the center of your screen now. They find out that's where it's, the spot is. Watch how this closes up. Winston fills it. LC's on the outside to make sure, and Jack Ham's in the middle of it. Don't forget that these Packers have only fumbled and turned the ball over with a fumble three times this year so far. That is quite an incredible record. Good block on Joe Green that time by McCarron, the offensive center. Up at the 45, make it second and eight. Kaufman in motion again. Draw play this time. Atkins with some room. Ivory in front of him. Enough for a Packer first down, I believe. Winston tripped him up. It's a good thing he tripped him up. Atkins comes out of Maryland with great speed, and he's a very deceptive runner. Watch this. A good time to call it the draw. Everybody's coming hard for Pittsburgh, so they just took him inside and logged him down. And I'm telling you, he had some open territory. That was a big tackle. They marked it shy of a first down by about a yard. Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead the Giants 7-0. A first quarter touchdown. Third and one. The tandem is Ivory. He'll be the ball carrier behind Atkins. He is near that first down. Man, it looked like he ran into a clothesline, didn't it? Stopped in a hurry, didn't Eddie he? Eddie Lee had it going, and all of a sudden, the whole body just stops and drops straight down. Short yardage. Furness almost off sides, but that's the way Pittsburgh plays it. And then it all stops and goes sideways. I believe that was Furness on the tackle, wasn't it? With help from Winston again. He's from poor little old Rhode Island. How did they ever find a player that's playing in Rhode Island like that? It's bigger than the state. <laughs> He'll measure. And he got it. First down Green Bay in Pittsburgh territory. First down pass. Is that what Bart Starr and Zeke Bartkowski and Lynn Dickey are thinking about? It's a good idea. 49ers-Lions tied at seven apiece. First quarter. Green Bay has both of those teams to play yet in the season. From the 47, Green Bay again adjusts that offensive formation, moving Kaufman back off the line of scrimmage, and now he comes in motion. I think he is going to throw on first down. He has time wide open. There's James Lofton. Lofton down to the 20, inside the 20. Wow. To about the 17. The Steelers came with the blitz, and that time the first down pass beat the blitz. It looked like Winston almost got Dickey as he was throwing it. Watch. Lynn's calling now. Man in motion are set. Now Lofton has the, he was like the long jump champ. He's over a 25-foot long jumper. 
Mel Blunt was off of him so far coming through the middle. And the great thing about 80 and 89 is they will catch the ball in traffic. They have blinders on. So it's a Packer first down. At the Pittsburgh 18. Steelers leading 2 0. Ivory down inside the 15 to about the 14. Clock running with two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Donnie Shell came up and made the tackle. What a run. Absolutely trapped in his own backfield for a yard and a half loss. And watch the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. This is some move. I know it's a short run. It doesn't look like much on the scorecard. Watch this move. There's the linebacker already. Watch the spin right here. Man, that's a classy running back. Robin Cole on the tackle. Make it second and seven. Ball at the Steelers 15 is Cochran gets wins in motion. Draw play to Atkins with some room down to about the 10. Packers look sharp and tough, don't they? And taking it straight to Pittsburgh. And I still think uh, coming into the season, and a lot of Pittsburgh people will tell you this, including the coaches, that this was the best-looking squad the Steelers have ever had together in one unit. But if you watched earlier, we showed you a list of the crippling injuries they've had this year. Staggering. It looks like the Pro Bowl roster. And missed games by, you know, all their skilled people, which is something you can't replace. Third and two. Double tight ends now for... Packers. Bill Larson. Along with Kaufman. Pitch back to Atkins. Around the corner. But he'll find a crowd of folks there. He might have staggered for a first down, however. He showed you some of that leg strength right there, didn't he? Robin Cole showed up on the outside, and somebody really cut him down from the outside. Look at that. The Steelers, who have missed games due to injuries this year. That includes this game here's the last play watch the left part of your screen you may see Robin Cole really get cut down right there and I wish I could identify the blocker that was some job Steve Atkins the ball carrier struggled for that first down got it so it's first and goal from the seven to the Packers Fake. And wisely, Dickey fires it over the head. The Steelers had that one read perfectly. Lofton, the intended receiver. And the Steelers have such a veteran group on defense, they will not take the, the phony fake, so to speak. That time, the fake into the line, the secondary just went after people. And Mel Blunt is still, in, in my opinion, the, the best one-on-one -on -one cornerback probably in maybe in the history of this game. He is one of the great ones, even with the five-yard chuck rule. Pretty fine compliment coming from one who played it as well as you did. It'll be second down and still goal from the seven. Lofton in motion this time. Pass is batted down again. I imagine from where it came, it had to be Greenwood. Blunt was on a blitz. Mel Blunt looks like he's about six foot four, two thirty. He's actually not, but he does have height. And he has tremendous instincts. Now watch the left part of your screen. 47 is going to show up out of nowhere. Nobody to pick him up. Dickey never got it off. I think that should be considered a sack. We will go with the Steelers with 11 sacks now. Never saw it. Colin Dickey still has seven yards to make. Now it's third down. Lofton comes back in the backfield. Now leaves. Dickey looking. Looking. What a catch by Ellis. A one-handed touchdown grab by Gary Ellis. What a catch. What a drive by the Packers. And the thing that made this was that Lynn Dickey started to run with it. And he has been he's been undergoing surgery most of his football career. Watch him. He decides everybody's covered. Now he decides I'll run. He says, oh my gosh, I can't do that. Watch this catch. Ellis, the rookie from Missouri. Oh, man, that is sensational. Wagner on the coverage, but there's nothing you can do about a grab like that. Bernie with Beverly holding. Left-footed and conventional. Can you be conventional if you're left-footed? 
Extra point by Bernie is good, and the Packers lead the Steelers 7-3. to three. Here's the touchdown, and you'll never see a better catch than this. Bart Starr's pulling out all stops. Good movement by the quarterback. Hello there. I want one for Christmas. You never know, but Thompson, I think, thought he was going to score this touchdown. Andre was going to get his first touchdown reception of the year. Instead, Ellis gets his first one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Well, when it's going right, things have a way of working out, don't they? Bernie will kick off. Frank Pollard, number 44, back deep for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Pollard's going to have to hurry to get to this one. Calvin Sweeney takes it from in front of him. Three to the outside. Knocked out of bounds by Turner, but not before good return. The Green Bay scoring drive. They kept it six minutes and 41 seconds. They went 70 yards and ran 12 plays. Dickey is now five for eight for a little over 60 yards and a touchdown. So the Steelers will take over. As that's the end of the first quarter, and Green Bay leads seven to two. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford Trucks. The trucks built Ford tough and built for fuel economy. And by Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. They have their weekly sellout at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Terry Bradshaw and his Steelers, however, Trail the Packers 72. 72. Len Swan is in there now, number 88. Sidney Thornton and Franco Harris, the running backs. That was Thornton. Thornton. Allerman, the tackler. And Thornton had the uh, pinched nerves in his neck. Uh, here's one of the bright young running backs in the entire league a year ago. Now, Swan had bad ribs. They just, uh, when the receivers reach up, somehow the defensive backs dig them in the ribs, which figures, but he's back now, and he's. He's still one of the most graceful and dangerous receivers, I guess, in all of football. Bradshaw's career against Green Bay hasn't been that effective. A lot of time. Passed down the middle, intended for Benny Cunningham, and just slightly overthrown. George Cumbie on the coverage. Cunningham had trouble getting away from Cumbie that time. The young Oklahoma linebacker really gave him a, a long ride and did not get a flag on it. And when a guy weighs 240 coming off like that and outweighs you by about 25 pounds, you do what you can do. So it'll be third down and the three wide receivers. Bradshaw one out of five for nine yards. Should be his tenth attempt coming up right now. Bell to the right. Swan and Smith to the left. Pass number 10 for Terry. Oh. Ten it for Smith. Incomplete. No catch. McCoy, Mike McCoy was there. The ball was underthrown a little bit, which is usually a pretty good place to put it. This time, Bradshaw gets a little heat from the left side. Let's see who puts it onto him just as he begins to set up. Looked like somebody came around the horn a little bit on him. Ezra Johnson, I believe. And from the way that pass looked, his thumb must be bothering him just a bit. Fred Nixon back deep. For the Packers, Craig Colquitt. One kick so far for 48 yards. I'd like to maintain that. Line drive that should be returned if you can make it there. Out of bounds. Good kick. Perfect kick. 42 yards from Craig Colquitt. The Packers check back in. Leading in the opening seconds of the second quarter, 7 2. They look pretty good. Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Green Bay leading the Steelers 7 to 2. And their last drive took over seven minutes. The great thing Bart Starr's team does is keep the ball for long periods of time. Lynn Dickey, the quarterback, still. And going to throw on first down again. I guess not. L.C. Greenwood Whoa. came over the top. And Dickey wisely. Went to the artificial turf. And Joe Green and company really came off the snap that time. That looked like the Steeler defensive line. They backed everybody off, and it's a battle all the way. And I think Mean Joe might have occupied two people, and they didn't get anybody to slide out and pick up L.C. Here it is from a different angle a little bit. 
Man, I tell you, there's some whacking going on. That's Leotis Harris who's blocking on Joe Green. So it'll be second down 16 for the Packers. Dickey trying to stick with that philosophy of throwing on first down. But you got to protect as well. Lofton in motion. Dickey goes back again. Protection doesn't break down. This is Thompson. And he is almost broken in half by Donnie Shell and his playmates. Watch the defensive line coming off now. Pittsburgh has got decided, well, we're going to have to do it with defense. Let's start hitting people. And I'm telling you, they are coming in the pocket. There is no pocket right now. Oh, some kind of a hit. Watch this. They are firing off, folks. It's tea time. And that looks like the Steeler. That's the Steeler rush. Well, Harris, with Joe Green coming right there, it's going to be a long afternoon. You might have to have some help. Third down. And again, they tee off. Dickey going deep for Lofton. Looked over the wrong shoulder, was finally cut down by Donnie Schill. Mike Wagner back there with him, too. Wagner's been hurt, too. He's had ribs in several different locations this season. That is a great secondary, though. If you beat them, you earn it. Wagner looks like he might be still bothered a bit. Number 23 comes off with the rest of his mates. Leo Bell back deep. Pretty, pretty good move by Dickey, wasn't it, to beat the big rush? David Beverly back to punt for Green Bay, number 11. High snap again. Beverly throws a pass. And the Steelers will take over. Penalty marker down, however. Hold everything. Might be lineman down fail because they thought there should have been a punt. It would have been blocked. I think by Ron Johnson. Boy, he was. Ronnie came off at the break. Out of the blocks. And Dreitz will let us know a little bit later on. They should decline the penalty. Bart Starr just put one of the meanest looking stares on anybody I ever saw during the time we were gone. David Beverly's had a rough afternoon. Wouldn't you have to search your soul? Oh, Starr is staring at you. You'll oh. know he was right. <laughs> Bradshaw now has it first down for the Steelers at the 24. The inside handoff to Harris. Franco down to about the 20, perhaps the 19. Remember, though, Franco Harris does have a bad knee. He is not the Franco Harris that we've seen when we saw him get 170 yards against Dallas one day. Uh, there's no way in this league right now that a running back can play 100% if he's not 100%. There are just too many people nipping at your heels all the time. It'll be second down between five and six for Pittsburgh. The line of scrimmage, the 19. Sidney Thornton back there with Harris. Bradshaw looking to the left, now to the right. As Swan, first down, first and goal. Estes Hood back there with him, but Swan to his knees for a first down catch. Number 18 for the year for Lynn Swan. The blitz came, and boy, the Steelers stayed right in and picked it up. Bradshaw's ball fluttered a little bit, but it got there. It'll be first and goal at the seven. Pretty good offensive line of scrimmage job that time. Harris and Thornton. Pittsburgh trying to recapture the lead. They had it 2-0 at one time. Bradshaw's going for the whole thing and has it. Lynn Swan again to the knees, a touchdown catch. Third touchdown catch of the year for Swanee. And there are a lot of people that wear jersey number 88 around this city, I'll tell you. But I've never seen him do anything but make class plays, whether he's talking to us in the lobby of a hotel or playing on in Super Bowls or anything. The big games are really his, his best days that I've seen. Bar with Colquitt holding. Good. That makes it 9-7 as Pittsburgh goes back on top. 11-13 left to play in the first half. Steelers 9, Packers 7. I told you those kickers were crazy. <laughs> I knew that. The 
preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Let's see if the other kicker is getting the deeper kickoff. High enough. Mark Lee takes it at the 10, however. Ooh. And the Steelers really close up a hole. Remember that Pittsburgh against NFC people, are they're 14-0 and 0 in this stadium. I mean, if you have a national uh, conference team and you come in here, you are really going against an incredible goose egg. Was it the last time the Steelers beat the Packers in Pittsburgh? Was at Forbes Field in 1953. Franny Rogel had 163 yards rushing. Jim Fix was the quarterback. A few years ago. First and ten, the ball at the 26. Lynn Dickey is the backer quarterback as Paul Kaufman again swings in motion. Eddie Lee Ivory has no place to go. Blunt comes up quickly. Boy, Robin Cole can really play the linebacking spot, number 56. Came out of New Mexico as a defensive end, and they made a linebacker out of him. Probably plays a run as well as any linebacker in football. Watch the right part of your screen, because 56 gets really caught in the, in the, in the switches here. Straightens up the fullback. The whole thing comes down on him, but an excellent play. Gain of about a half yard. Lynn Swan's 42 career touchdown receptions. Ties the mark, the all-time Steeler record, which was held by Buddy Dial. Ivory again with no place to go. L.C. Greenwood. Pittsburgh def defense is sort of laying their ears back, you know it? Woody Weidenhofer is their defensive coordinator, and he just said, we just got to turn them loose a little bit and let them play Steeler football. And I think Joe Green sort of... Uh, Sort of intimated a little bit before the game, didn't you, that it was going to be a rough physical game for them at least? It's been true to form. Third down and ten. Let's take it eight. Green again off the ball, perhaps a little too quick that time. Green got a hand on Dickey and down he went. The blitz was on. Joe might have jumped off sides that time. The Steelers fired the right linebacker. I believe that was Taves that came from the right side. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you right now, they're letting Lynn Dickey know it, that if you're going to throw, it's going to be out of a silo. It's against Pittsburgh. Bring up third and five again, huh? Steve Furness jumped early, too, I think. Defense offside number 75. Joe Green. So Dickey will get another chance. He could be the comeback player of the decade, as far as I'm concerned, Lynn Dickey. With all the problems he's had, shoulder, hip, played last year the entire year with a pin in his leg, which never did a heel properly. Third and five. And again, the penalty marker goes down as Dickey stays in the pocket. Catch by Ellis, and Ellis, who can move down the sideline to the 10. Ellis just outran the secondary. A penalty marker was down. The Packers wisely went through with the play. He caught Jack Ham turning around to look back for the ball. And of course, the flags flew, and everybody might have just stopped momentarily. C4 was lined up in the neutral zone. Decline a penalty. That's a touchdown. It's a touchdown, Packers. Furness was lined up offside. 70 yards. You saw Ellis make one spectacular catch already. Watch this one. Now, Furness lined up offsides, and Joe Green got back just in time. Now, watch Jack Ham. Just got caught looking back for the ball, and it's over. This young man has good speed. To be 220-plus, nobody was gaining any ground. Good spike, too. Bernie with Beverly holding. Packers move back on top. 14 to 9 the score now. The ninth Star. touchdown pass they've gotten this year, number nine. We had heard nothing but good things about Ellis as a runner, but he's got an excellent pair of hands. Ernie will kick off the Packers. Taking the lead, there's Frank Pollard. 
deep man for Pittsburgh. Line drive kickoff and a good one from Bernie. Chases Pollard back into his own end zone. About three yards deep when he started. He's on his feet. Out to about the 16 yard line. Mike Jolly made the tackle. There's the Packers scoring drive. And Dickey is 7 for 12 for 140 yards and two touchdown passes to his fullback, Mr. Ellis. Ellis made one one handed high over his head. He took that one about six inches off the turf and then turned on the afterburner. Well, I saw the Packers in preseason against Baltimore on a rainy night in Milwaukee. And I had uh, Max Million next to me, Mr. McGee, and Paul Horning and Gary Canofalo. We all said it was the worst looking Packer team we'd ever seen. Star has done some job. They've really come a long way. Here's Bradshaw firing outside to Thornton. Breaks one tackle, breaks another. Fights for about a yard after all that. 14 to 9, Green Bay over Pittsburgh. We got an injury, too. Uh, the arm tackle that Charlie Johnson, the nose man, put on. He's also from Maryland, and it looks like he just grabbed his left arm. Active Mr. Noseman. He's right there on the other side of number 12. He'll engage Webster, gets hit by Brown, and somehow gets out to help in on the tackle. Boy, is he hustling. Yeah, it's his left arm, all right. Cannot afford to lose him. Now they're checking his left leg. It's the first game the Packers have played this year, I think, on artificial turf, isn't it? It's true. This guy is really an active uh, nose man. They went to the 34. They were worried about could they get anybody to play it. And the this guy they got to play it went elsewhere. Talk about Clark, the big right. fellow that went from Penn State to the North. Lines. Right. Terry Jones, number 63, will take his place. Third year man from Alabama. In front of Webster. That could be a long afternoon. Don't waste any time going right to work on that spot. That's Sidney Thornton, who struggles out for four or five. They trapped him that time. They let the young nose man through. And watch Ray Penny, number 74. Now watch this. They'll bring up, they bring the tackle in, John Kolb, all the way from the outside. Kolb only goes about 265. Straightens up the young man that's very nervous coming in anyway. But I'll tell you, the Packers recovered pretty well. On third and six. Bradshaw has not had a good afternoon so far. One touchdown pass to Swan. Look out there. Ball is knocked loose. That's a fumble, and the Packers have it. Ezra Johnson came around from the right side. AC Merrill is number 78, who made the recovery. It was a big pass rush from the blind side, and Bradshaw has hurt the right arm again. This is almost the way he got stripped against Oakland. Watch the left part of your screen now. Sidney Thornton moves up, but he helps on the tackle. Here comes Ezra around the horn. And strips him of the ball, takes him down. That's the fourth fumble that Bradshaw's lost this year. Again, that's Casey Merrill who made the recovery. Bradshaw over on the sideline, and Cliff Stout is up and throwing behind the Steeler bench. He played the entire game against Cleveland last week. The Packers get a break. Ball at the 11-yard line. Green Bay already leading. Eddie Lee Ivory straight ahead. Yes. Used to about the 10. He is popped Ivory. by Gary Dunn. Stop by Dunn. There's Stout, 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 the young Webster. quarterback from Youngstown State. Well, he had a big day last week against Cleveland, over 300 yards. A lot of speculation here in Pittsburgh that he perhaps is trade bait because they have another fine athlete as their third quarterback, Malone, the rookie who's bigger than Bradshaw and a great prospect. Better keep all three of them. Second down. Let's let's down. Attempt to Thompson is thrown behind him. He was well covered. Glenn Dickey only had one chance. He had to either gun it and get it then or get caught with the ball. And as any quarterback will tell you, including Terry Bradshaw, don't get caught with the ball. Get set up quick, unload it, and let the receivers take their chances somewhere else. It's very congested in there. Bradshaw up, walking around.
Walker touchdowns. Bernie loosening up. That might have saved a life. That means somebody was coming and ripping. You mean somebody like Lynn Dickey? Like Lynn Dickey, that's right. It is 14 to 9. That was incorrect. Packers leading. Here comes the blitz again. Dickey's protection is better. His pass is picked off in the end zone by J.T. Thomas, who had ideas about coming out and then kneeled in the end zone. And the Steelers will take over at the 20. The Steelers have 17 interceptions coming in. Look at Johnson's play on Andre. Sit back in the end zone. This ball was just high and wide. Bradshaw back at quarterback. That's correct. He made 14, Pittsburgh 9. Ten for Bradshaw. He still has Thornton and Franco Harris as his running backs. Perfect for Swan trying to get away from the rush. Cannot. Down he goes. Mike Butler was the first Packer to arrive. Terry Jones helped him out. Butler got his sixth sack of the year. He's played extremely well in spurts. If the big fella playing left defensive end plays at a high level all the time, and he may learn that from watching Pittsburgh, he can come. Right part of your screen, fake the inside thing. They're running a takeoff with Swan, and now Terry turns away from that, and Butler just stays after him. Great play. Bell goes wide to the left, Swan out to the right. Second and 17. Johnson, the injured Packer, the nose man, headed for the locker room on a stretcher at the moment, but he's sitting up. Hard to tell what the degree of the injury is. We'll find out as soon as we can. It was to the leg and not his arm. Third down, 17. Bradshaw, Five, excuse me. Sorry, Bradshaw is like one for six on third down conversions. Minutes left to play in the second quarter with the Packers leading the Steelers 14 to 9. Brent Shaw calls it. Again under pressure. Brent Shaw is hit just as he lets it go, and a penalty marker goes down. Ezra Johnson put the rush on. A holding is a preliminary indication. Big Casey Merrill was also in there that just recovered that fumble number 78. They're putting a lot of heat. And this is one thing that Bradshaw has always had an abundance of time. Holding number 55. Decline a penalty. That's fourth down. John Cole was trying to block Ezra Johnson, and it didn't work. So Craig Colquitt enters the scene again. Fred Nixon back deep. Colquitt has, ne Colquitt has never had one blocked, I don't believe, in his history. Well, no, uh, Very quick. <laughs> Woo. Good kick. Nixon surveying things at his 38. That's Cassidy, I beg your pardon, not Nixon. Number 88, Nixon is usually back there. Frank Pollard made the tackle. Winston is a little upset about something. Yes, does Hood. Doesn't like him much, I don't think. And over by the Green Bay bench. Even at home, that's not safe. <laughs> Injured Packer player down is number 62. That is Buddy Idlet. He is normally their center on punt formation. Now he's had problems today. I don't know what their backup man can do. Next Sunday here on CBS, the NFL will present Dallas at New York, Washington, Chicago, Atlanta at St. Louis, where we'll be. Detroit, Minnesota, San Francisco, Green Bay, and Philadelphia at New Orleans. This artificial surface is really firm here at, at Three Rivers. And those shoes are so good, once you get them down, it's hard to get them moved. You can't do any shuffling. The traction is so good. Almost too good. Checking his left leg.
How many people you suppose came from Green Bay? They have such a loyal Packer backer bunch up there. I bet you a lot of them. A few thousand came down here. I saw a lot of yellow and green running around the lobby last night. The Packer coach who was the quarterback back here in 1970. He was not running around the lobby last night no. in yellow and green. <laughs> Chuck Noel and Terry Bradshaw. Part in conversation with Eddie Lee Ivory. That's how the quarterbacks have done so far today. Four out of ten for Bradshaw. 28 yards. That one touchdown to Swan and Dickey. Seven of 14. The two touchdowns both to Ellis. Jerdell Middleton and Ellis are now the running backs as Ivory gets a rest. Comes Lofton out to the left. Thompson goes to the right. Jerdell Middleton can play too. He's been bothered with minor injuries, but he's a good running back. They've got five good running backs now. That's Middleton. In the Steeler territory for a couple of tough yards before Dennis Winston leads the Steeler defense. The first day you and I ever saw Dirt Winston after he left Arkansas was in a preseason game against New England. You remember he got into a fight with three or four of the old veterans for New England? He is tough. That time he actually, uh, he looked like he was getting ready to bite the ball carrier. He was so mad getting in there. He's hot all the time. Chuck Noel says that he is the best athlete he's ever seen. My gosh. That's some tribute. Of Jack Lambert in the middle and jockeying around for position now behind Joe Green. The pitch goes back to Middleton. Middleton's got some room and he's got a Packer first down. Winston again on the tackle, but a good run by Middleton. Good, good block by Stokes, the big offensive left tackle, number 76. This is a tough play to run in the past. You couldn't get away with this. They buried uh, Robin Cole on that side over there. And he ran behind Joe Green. Some of the people didn't know where Turdell was going. Joe usually creates havoc when he lines up in that position. Slanted in and almost on top of the center like he is right now. Builds 14. Atlanta nothing. There is Dickey to Middleton again. Middleton has more good yards. Down to about the 36. Jack Ham on the tackle. Not by Ham. The Premiums field goal in the second quarter has given Tampa Bay a 10 0 lead over the Giants, who are really having their problems. Turnell's in his fourth year now, but a couple of years ago, he was just running wild. He's out of Memphis State. He started getting the small injuries the ankle, the knee, the soreness. He's a quality running back. Here's the deep back now behind Ellis. takes Blunt out of bounds, but he played that well. Mel Blunt has been doing that for years. This is his 46th interception of all the active players. He is the leader. They get a double now on Lofton. He's got deep help from Wagner. And this time, Lynn Dickey just didn't read it. They had rolled up to the split end with the great receiver. And Mel Blunt's got number 46. And there is another injured Packer on this play. We'll identify him as soon as we can. It's Leotis Harris. We'll check on him in a minute. Excellent protection that time. It was just a wrong read, which happens occasionally, doesn't it? Green Bay 14, Pittsburgh 9. The Packers seem to be losing a lot of players due to injury. Atkins, Johnson, Idlett, and now Leotis Harris. We're talking to Mel Blunt before the game and he said, by the time I get used to the new rules, they'll probably put in another one, and I'll have to stay a few more years and play again, you know? But he plays without the chuck about as well as any cornerback. Uh, everybody else is going to their psychiatrist at least once a week, you know, he's playing corner. This is Harris, who appears to be okay. Perhaps just stunned a little bit. He came over to try to help out make the tackle after the interception. I didn't see who blocked him, but somebody did a number. Got Swan and Theo Bell in there at the outside receiving spots. And that offensive line for Pittsburgh you're looking at, I think every one of them in their bench presses almost 500 pounds. 
Grossman is still the tight end. Jim Smith is now the wide receiver on the left side. Swan was on the right. Here is Franco Harris looking for some room. And the Packers again swarm on defense. Terry Jones, the first man there. Pittsburgh has always used their outside receivers, and they're so good so much. And occasionally, you think that they probably should use the tight end or throw to some back coming out of the backfield. Swan comes down to the bottom of your screen. Smith up on the left. Franco now with seven carries. Fake to Harris, screen to Harris. But to Thornton, I beg your pardon. And Sidney Thornton barrels for a Pittsburgh first down. Stopped by Johnny Gray. Good call, though. We're not trying to act like experts on this, but your outside receivers, you can double them, and if you don't have a tight end that can split it, this time the Steelers send Grossman all the way through the formation, then drop it off. The big rush right now doesn't even worry you. And that is a runaway truck. Down to the 41-yard line. There goes Randy. Took two linebackers and a couple of defensive backs with it. So the Steelers in Packer territory at the 41, with two minutes left in the first half. Harold Betters on the trombone. Funky trombone, boy, he's like first and ten. He's as much Pittsburgh almost as Arthur Rooney, you know. He's been here since I've been coming here, and that's a long time. First and ten at the 41. Shaw's got to throw on first. It is a pretty good idea. Right down the middle, drop. Sidney Thornton had it. And then left before he got full possession. Did you see him talk to the ball in? He looked down at the ball like he was talking to it like it was a, an animated object. Like, how did I drop you? He had some year last year, didn't he? Sure did. Second down and 10. Second and 10, a minute 55 left in the first half. Packers 14. Pittsburgh nine. Both teams have all three of their timeouts remaining. They've been a bad fourth quarter team this year, but Pittsburgh, if they get it rolling as they did it in the Super Bowl, they're fast forward in that fourth period. Second and ten for Bradshaw. Packers stay with a three-man rush. Bradshaw to the outside. Smith has it. Out of bounds at the 18. Johnny Gray on the coverage. That was a Bradshaw throw. A Bradshaw throw and a Smith corner move that was really great. He's the top of the screen now. They got a double on him. They got the cornerback, McCoy, and the safety man. He just takes it inside, gets away from one, and bends away and beats double coverage. Incredible. They have a wealth of wide receivers. When you think about the four that they use, Swan and Stallworth, Smith and Bell, a lot of talent there. They all will block, too. Come across the middle, too. Swan to the right, Smith again to the left. Fumble! Bradshaw gets on it, and the Packers come up with it. I don't know what happened to that, but I do know the Packers have the football. Number 53, Mike Douglas, comes out with it. Looked like he might have pulled away from Webster, and that ball, by the way, when that center shoves it up there, it's just been like blown out of a cannon. It is really slapped up there. Big turnover. Looked like it hit somebody's foot, did it? I couldn't tell. It looked like he did come out a little early. Bradshaw had it for just a second. He hit the artificial turf and jarred it loose. That's Cumbie, I think, that came in. They must have been blitzing anyway, huh? Things have not gone well for Terry. He seems to hang tough, though, and later in the game, oh, yeah. he'll look like a different person sometimes. At the 34, first down for the Packers. And again, they have all three of their timeouts remaining. Lynn Dickey goes straight back on first. Outside Ellis, he's got some people in front of him. Ellis still on his feet. Still on his feet. What a hit. Dennis Winston took the bulk of that. What a play this is. Here's the young man that they, when the Rams, when the Rams got back young blood and Larry Brooks from their fishing trip, the Rams cut loose this Ellis. Now watch this play. Good call. Lynn knows that's what it's going to be all the way. It's a slip screen. Watch Joe Green come all the way. Almost look at this contact with Winston. He's strong. 
Mickey on first again. Throws and Kevin Loft and it's picked off. Donnie Shell with the football. Penalty marker down as Thompson makes the tackle. And a little disturbance breaks out again. Shell is upset. And Dirk Winston's upset again. His helmet still, he's got the ball. That's Donnie Shell with sixth interception of the year, one of the premier safety men that's been around for a long time. That six is his career high, too. Most of the interceptions you get at that spot are deflections because you're so busy trying to control a tight end or something that if it's deflected, you have a chance to go over and get it by being energetic, you know? Ben Drive will mark it off. Still foul, clipping number 53. It is against Winston. I thought he was mad about something. <laughs> he plays craze, but that's not bad if you're playing middle linebacker. Yeah, first down, Steelers. A couple of quick turnovers. Steelers have, Steelers have the football at their own 28. That Shaw with plenty of time this time. Throws down the middle intended and hits Smith, and Smith takes a rock in the back. Johnny Gray really put the leather to it. The one thing that all of the safety men and all the quarterbacks for Green Bay will do, they will really stick you. And they're in a lot of solo coverage. And boy, that time the ball just came out. But Smith is tough. He hangs. At halftime feature as Brent Musburger talks to Roman Gabriel, coaching in college now. Well, he had a couple of tough starts. Some shot by the safety man, huh? Be second down at the 28 10. Clock shows 50 seconds left in the first half. That shot of Thornton. And there's a meeting at the sideline. Mark Lee was the first man to hit him. Packers are playing extremely deep in a prevent type defense. I know some people have been beaten in the last few seconds uh, playing this kind of a defense because you don't get pressure, but you really have to go with a percentage, I think. Eight of four, third down. Four-yard pickup makes it third and six. The Packers, with their record 3-4-1, and one, tied with Tampa Bay for second place in the NFC Central Division. Shorts first at five and three, so that one will probably be settled the last month of the season. Steelers in second place in the AFC Central. The 4-4 four four record. Bradshaw trying to better that. Pass thrown outside to Swan and caught by Swan. It looked like he might be hurt the way he hit the ground. Estes Hood is on the coverage, but Swan's okay. I don't believe they're going to call it a catch. I believe Estes rode him out of bounds just before he could get him down. It is incomplete. This was an audible. 64 blue is what Bradshaw kept calling down there. The ball is not thrown very well. This ball was not zipped. Swan was waiting for the ball, and it just didn't get there. Bradshaw did not throw that the way he normally guns it. Colquitt. Hunt for Pittsburgh. Cassidy back for Green Bay. Colquitt gets it off quickly. Cassidy. With some running room, stays on his feet. Still on his feet. Cassidy will go out of bounds in front of the Packer bench, but a good return. Good block by Casey Merrill set up that. Cassidy comes out of Utah State, out of the rugged country, I guess around Provo or somewhere in there. Pretty good little ball carrier, isn't he? Comes in as the third wide receiver. No penalty markers down on that one. Too much. Uh, Herschel Walker yesterday, the Georgia Bulldog. I saw him when he was in high school. I tell you, he might be the fastest big fellow to come along in a long time. Just 18 years old, he is really something. He's the closest to Jim Brown I've seen. Strong, big, and likes to play. And has handled everything very well. First and 10 at the 44. Dickey to Middleton. 
Middleton running well. Gets across the 50 yard line, stopped by Blunt. Green Bay still has three timeouts, so does Pittsburgh. The Packers just used one. Pretty good running play that time. The guards got out in good shape. Leotis Harris and, and Goforth. That young offensive line for that's playing against the Joe Greens and all's doing a pretty good job for Green Bay, you know. They're growing up. Very young team, the Packers. What was that average? 20, uh, 24 years of age average. Funky trombone of Harold Benners. Last night. For once we were lucky, we didn't get out of the hotel. Couldn't find him. See? Then Bart. Kowski's been some kind of an assistant for Bart Starr, hadn't he? Next door neighbors, yeah. and good friends. And Said he cleans the driveway. <laughs> gets the rock salt out for him. Sweeps the tennis court, cleans the pool. <laughs> Job security. 14-9, Green Bay over Pittsburgh, Bradshaw looking on. Dickey looking and throwing has Ellis for first down. Penalty marker is down and a scuffle goes on. I thought, I thought that was a reception. I believe it was a fumble. Lucky he had it. He carried it a couple of steps. I think the holy was on James Lofton, huh? By Blunt, I believe. Way over on the sideline is where the penalty marker went down. Once he gets five yards deep, he is not fair game defense, anymore. Number 47. It That's was an automatic one. first down. Automatic first. The Packers, don't forget, have two. St. Louis leading Dallas 7 0. Touchdown by Morris for the Cardinals. When the rules were changed. They wanted to put more points on the board. That's worked. <laughs> it sure has. With nine seconds to go, Dickey will probably throw it as high and as far as he can if he has time. Cough put in motion. Three man rush by Pittsburgh. It's over the sideline intended for Middleton. And overthrown. One more play. We'll complete the first half. Lauren Taves on the coverage, number 51 for Pittsburgh. I think Dickey's come up with a strange little cadence. It seems a little bit ro rocky and herky jerky. And he's kept the Pittsburgh defensive line, at least in the second period, a little bit off the off the mark a little bit, so they can't get that split second rush that Joe Green and uh, his people like. They've always been one of the quickest teams off the ball on defense. Pittsburgh. I mean. Staggered count. You two just talking about really helps. Hoffman out. Dickey for Lofton. And he hauls as it and is knocked out of bounds on the far sideline by Dwayne Woodruff. And that was indeed the last play of the first half. Boy, what a shot that number 80 took. Lofton and he kept the ball and gets right back up. What did they have another play? So at the end of the first half. The Green Bay Packers, who've been coming on in recent weeks, lead the defending world champion Pittsburgh Steelers by the score of 14 to 9. Lofton, uh, last time you and I saw him personally, was down in the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. He said to tell you hello. Remember, that's when he was yeah. wearing the red, white, and blue uh, national track. Yeah. He's quite an athlete, isn't he? But NCAA long jump champion at one time. Some athlete. I've always thought about this, and it seems they do it at almost every stadium, particularly when they have locker rooms in this layout. The teams have to cross to get to the locker room. And if anybody's mad at each other, that leads to trouble sometimes. An old Forbes feel here in this stadium, and I know Mr. Rooney remembers the teams used to sit side by side on the same side right. of the field. And when fights broke out, you had to figure out which bench you were going to play for. I guess the only place they still do that, both benches on the same side of the field, is in Minnesota. 14-9. Green Bay. 
in a row, but today they are in trouble against Green Bay. The Packers assaulted themselves with a snap over the punter's head for a two-point safety, but then they came right back as Lynn Dickey Irv went to James Lofton here for 30 yards. Boy, Jay, that guy's quite a weapon, Brent. Dickey's had a good first half, throwing nine for 19 times, 172 yards and two touchdowns, and we're gonna have one of them cranked up here pretty soon. Exactly, to Gary Ellis. And watch the one-handed grab in the end zone for six. And Irv, here comes the second bad snap. Boy, you, it's really important, of course. Special teams play is about one-third of all plays in the National Football League, and you have to have clean plays. And from there, it was Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, 42nd time. That great connection is hooked for a touchdown. But then, watch this sequence, and really here, Irv, you've got to wonder about the Steeler defense. Dickie to Ellis. Boy, you, Ellis demonstrates good speed here. He's right in the middle of the soft spot of the zone, and the big guy weighs about 215 pounds or so, simply outruns the secondary. What an effort. Now, elsewhere, 14-10. Welcome back to our studio in New York. And you know, sometime or other, every coach has a game that becomes a nightmare. A game when nothing goes right for his team and everything goes right for the other guys. Now that nightmare became a reality for a man whose career has had one success after another. Remember this quarterback, number 18, Roman Gabriel, threw over 200 touchdown passes in his career, including this one that George Allen will never forget. The Rams beat the Green Bay Packers in 1967. And 10 years after that, Roman Gabriel retired. Then Roman was named the head coach at Cal Poly Pomona. That school is located a little bit less than an hour east of Los Angeles. And his Division II Broncos started out the season pretty well. They were 500 after six games, and that's good for that school. But then Roman took the team into Portland State, where they lost. They lost 93 to 7. I don't ever recall quite having a, an experience like we had at Portland State. Now we received the kickoff, and then our first offensive series, we handed off to one of our backs, and he got hit pretty good and lost the ball. And, they recovered, and as the score indicates, they were very explosive, so we gave them, an, gave them an opportunity to score very quickly, and we were down, and then from there, it just kept snowballing. to seven. It was 28 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, 58 to nothing at the half. So what does coach Roman Gabriel say to the team in the locker room? At halftime of the game, I probably uh, said some things to a ball club that I would say to professional football players. He was a little embarrassed because of us. The guys were so mad that they were literally trying to just take it out on the man over him. Everybody got pretty frustrated and off mad, kinking the neck, watching the ball go all the time. You can make a case that Portland State ran it up on Gabriel, but Roman's trying not to look back. He's got three more games to play, and winning those would be his best revenge. Oh, you'd love to play him next year, wouldn't you? Uh, I'd like to have the opportunity, especially uh, if we could get us a few kids with, with a little speed to, that could, uh, could cover some receivers, because everywhere else we match up to him pretty good. So one day we will get that opportunity, I'm, I'm sure. You remember when Custard played the Indians? Uh, he got massacred, too, but he died. We got three more battles left, and we're still alive. There's going to be a comeback for Roman Gabriel on this so. team. Then. We certainly hope so. <laughs> you know, Brent, I was with Gabe out in L.A. for three years when he was considered one of the top quarterbacks in football. And if anybody can come back, that guy can, believe me. Well, he did last night, even though they lost. Cal Lutheran, 20. Cal Poly Pomona, 13. So the Broncos at least played a lot better than they did against Portland State. And the NFL today continues as we send you back to the stadium now in the game you're enjoying. The preceding message was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. Alcoa, producer of energy saving aluminum. And by the new Naralco Rototrack Razor. At Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. Packers 14, Pittsburgh 9. Burn 
Rooney will kick off for Green Bay. Pollard should handle and does at the three for the uh, for the Steelers. Tripped up outside the 20, about the 23-yard line where Pittsburgh will operate. Look down, three lines down. Look at the yards rushing. When was the last time you've seen a Steeler team with 35 yards rushing at halftime? Only 68 passing, a total of 103. On the other side, Dickey, though, he's had the three interceptions. that 172 yards passing and a total of 222. That's an incredible stat. Steelers only have five first downs. At the 23, first and 10. who is still with Franco Harris as the two Pittsburgh running backs. Quarterback comparison, you saw the rest of the stats. Bradshaw, 7 out of 16, 68 yards, the one touchdown to Lynn Swan. And sacked twice. Dickey, 172 yards, two touchdown passes to Ellis, one sack. Second and seven for Terry Bradshaw. Again, fake the inside trap. Bradshaw sidearms and misses Lynn Swan. That time the Packers got pretty good pressure and knocked him down, and they kept Franco Harris in to even pick up and block. Pressure from number 63, Terry Jones, the nose man. He moves over and takes on Finney, gets away from Webster. Number five is John Cobe. They just keep coming. Terry stands there a long time. And here comes 63. Ball with special delivery. So it'll be third down seven. Backers still in that three-man front. Four linebackers. Pittsburgh, which came in as the best third down conversion team in the whole league, is just one out of seven. Bradshaw is going to have to take off and does. He'll have that first down and slides at the 40. Mark Lee tackled him. That show might be hurt. Looked like he almost got the face guard, but there were no flags on it. Terry had to run with it. He didn't want to. Remember, he's had a bunged up right hand. His shoulder was hurt. Watch how much time now he has to look over receivers. And there's nobody around. Now he decides, go ahead and run it. And here's a great athlete. 6'3", 210 or 12 pounds. He just landed on it, on the artificial turf. It was not an illegal hit by any means. First down, Pittsburgh at the 40. Hand off to Harris. Franco cuts back inside like the Franco of old just a bit. And gets about seven yards. Johnny Gray made the tackle. Okay, what's, what's the offensive left side of the line now? Stokes and Goforth. Oh, pardon me, on the Steelers, I mean. That's Finney pulling around. John Cole takes Ezra Johnson to the outside and buries him. Franco looked like he moved on that, like you said. He cut back and get it straight ahead. But he is carrying a bad wheel. He's got a bad knee. Second and three. Minus scrimmage to 47. Packers leading 14 to 9. There is Sid Thornton. He's got a couple of blockers out in front of him. Thornton crashes down to the 41. Best looking running play of the day for Pittsburgh. And Thornton doesn't fool around, does he? he Turn it inside and just thundered. Watch him. Closest place, direct line. Gets it here. Finney's pulling. Got a good block on the outside by Franco Harris. That baby opened up. If you run straight at the 34, you can have a lot of good luck at it. If you try to run wide, you can get in trouble. Sid Thornton, by the way, is 5'11 and 230. That's a load coming on the corner. Brown is number 79. Of course, that's Bradshaw. Best drive the Steelers have put together all day. Bradshaw under pressure again. Fires incomplete, and he had to get it done. Steve Luke, uh, as the Packers blitzed, was the one in white who put the pressure on. And Mike Douglas, the inside linebacker, also came on that. Hey, Cardinals in Dallas. Tony Dorsett just scored for the Cowboys to tie it 7 all. Cliff Stout. Number two quarterback for Pittsburgh loosening up behind the bench. Let us see him hit a golf ball. Cliff. Straight. That doesn't help you a lot if you're in the pocket trying to wrestle with Packers. Stout 6'4 and 218. 
Another good athlete. Bradshaw, the handoff is again to Sue Thornton with a pocket penny on the front. And Thornton fumbles. Scramble is on. Packers had it. They should get it. They got it surrounded. Green Bay football. Thornton fumble. Thornton had a Pittsburgh first down. It's only a 12th fumble the Steelers have had this year. Sometimes when things go flat it's hard to get it pumped up again you know what I mean that's a good way to describe Pittsburgh today is just a little flat Pittsburgh got it I can't believe it the three Packers had the first shot at it maybe five but that shows you how the offensive line comes down and hustles look at Brown down there the big tackle he's still fighting for the ball Grossman comes out with it and slams it down to the artificial turf <laughs> how the Packers miss coming up with this one. There's the fumble by Thornton. Trying to think somebody came from the offside. We'll try to get his name, rank, and serial number. Now look at this scramble for the ball. And on artificial surface, you talk about something being a live pellet. That goes the other way. Look at Grossman, 84, leading the way in there. How did he come up with it? It looks like a scrum off. <laughs> Thornton as they come right back to him. Hood Sid is knocked out of bounds and taken out of bounds. The penalty marker goes down. As does Hood. Kurt Allerman was over. Once you get on the white carpet, that restraining line on the out of bounds, it's going to be called an unsportsmanlike. We saw the Chicago quarterback get one of those last week, remember? Vince Evans. One of the rare calls you'll ever see. That's where a lot of us in my day, uh, I think I learned it for the old Pittsburgh Steelers. That's where we did a lot of our good tackling was out of bounds. Never did hear the whistle. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on a defense number 60. That's a first down. They call the linebacker, right? Allerman. Here's Thornton now. There's Estes Hood. And now Allerman does finish it off out of bounds. Almost into the lower seats. Rocky Blyer. Lined up as the flanker on the right and now shifts back into the backfield. Number 20. First down at the 11. Bradshaw going for the bundle immediately. As Franco Harris. Inside the 10 to about the 8. Knocked out by Mike McCoy. It's a 14th catch for Franco Harris this year. A lot of people don't think he's ever reached his potential, which makes me just shake my head. I have never seen a fullback, other than maybe Jimmy Brown, that got outside with such, such finesse and all and still could run inside like a truck. If he hasn't reached his potential, when he does, a lot of people better quit playing. He's almost at 9,000 yards, isn't he? Wire again lined up on the right side as the flanker number 20. Been so reliable for so many years. Here's Harris. Bradshaw keeps it. He missed the handoff. Bradshaw. Run out of bounds by Allerman. You, you said it. Watch the handoff. Now, Franco looks back like, I don't even have the ball. Watch it. And all of a sudden, Franco says, wait a minute, you didn't give it to me. So he goes back and fills behind him and allows the quarterback to safely uh, escape. Packers as Chuck Noll. Packers have lost five players to injury. Five who will not be back. Nixon, Atkins, Johnson, Turner, Idlet. For the Steelers, Dwight White is out with a knee and he won't return. Two out of eight, the Pittsburgh Steelers are on third down. The second one was that scramble by Bradshaw. There he is straight back. Throws outside. Almost intercepted and then almost caught. Estes Hood, the defender. Lynn Swan, the intended receiver. We'll have a look now at Matt Barr, number five. Could Swan pick your pocket? He had no chance of keeping that ball from being intercepted. And he came back and got around and pulled it out of the defender's hands. Craig Colquitt is the holder. There's the book on Barr in 1980. 
He's never missed uh, from the 30 in in this league. He's 15 for 50. This is from 27. Bar hits from 27 yards out. Makes it Green Bay 14, Pittsburgh 12. Matt Barr of the kicking plan of Barr's. Barr will kick off. 14-12 Packers over the Steelers. Mark Lee back deep. Standing at the 10. No field in the shade now. Lee. Lowered his head outside the 25 and pulled up to about the 28. Calvin Sweeney was the first one to make contact. Lynn Dickey was trying to explain the sudden resurgence of the team under Bart Starr, and he said before the Dallas game they had a players meeting for you know nobody else but the players and they played very well against Dallas and they didn't win it but they felt like that was when it sort of began to come together for them. Ellis and Ivory Kaufman in motion and off to Eddie Lee Ivory tackle behind the line of scrimmage by L.C. Greenwood. L.C. Remember he made those those yellow sneaker shoes famous when he first came in the league. Watch how fast he closes down. Joe Green goes in, gets cut off by McGarren. Furness is sort of being handled. Got some help in there too. Beasley showed up to help. Dwight can still fly, can't he? Or L.C. I mean, so with gold shoes, he should be able to. 10-10. Lions and 49ers. Thompson swinging in motion this time and Dickey to throw. Pittsburgh blitz. Bounces off Ellis's hands. He was hit by Jack Ham just as the ball got there. That hurts. Ham's one of those solid Penn State linebackers. Remember we were talking to Eddie O'Neill, the injured linebacker for Green Bay. And we started trying to name how many Penn State linebackers are in the league. We got up to about 10. We got 10 of them in there. And it's very hard to do a game on a Sunday afternoon or whenever and not have a Penn State linebacker maybe on both sides playing defense. If O'Neill were healthy, you'd have that situation here. Dickey surveying things again. The blitz is on. Dickey gets away from it momentarily, throws high, intended for Thompson. Cut down by Ron Johnson. Number 64 for Ness. Working on Goforth, gives him over to McGarren. Watch this effort. Watch Johnson. You won't see it. My gosh. Dance me a little bit, right? Theo Bell back deep. David Beverly to kick for Green Bay. They've had all kind of problems snapping the ball to the punter. Sid Kitson is now the snapper. And Beverly doesn't hit it that well. Bell will handle it the 37. Sifts through the first bunch. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Almost broke it. Cassidy came up from behind and dragged him down. 36-yard punt, and Bell almost took it all the way back. It's a good thing that Cassidy kept hustling. Watch the old Bell from Arizona. One, two, part of three, four, spin. Look out. Utah State's got Arizona. Cassidy just made the save. 14-12. That's a pretty good stretch right there. And they have not lost at home to a team from the NFC since 1971 when they lost to the Rams. 14 games, I believe. 14 straight over the NFC here. Pitch outside to Franco Harris. Franco rolls down inside the 35 to 34. Alderman and Hood on the tackle for the pack. Franco was just testing his leg during that timeout to try to get sometimes the second half the tape job has begun to get loose or whatever. But he's had 36 100 yard days. And again if you walk up next to him you don't really realize that he's 225 pounds 6'2". You know he's put together like a smaller person. Third and two at the 34. Over nine minutes left to play in the third quarter. Green Bay leading 
That Shaw again to Franco Harris. Straight ahead, Terry Jones Harris. tied it up. They try that good quick trap that Pittsburgh's been using for years. Now remember Corson, their big offensive right guard from South Carolina, an all-pro prospect. He went down with a knee early. Uh, Sam Davis went down with a knee early. Uh, so we've got really a young rookie playing right guard that hasn't played a lot of professional football. McGriff, the big kid. Six feet, 267 from Florida A&M. He was a lot bigger than that. Bradshaw will throw. He's looking at Smith. Now he changes his mind. The old bell comes back on the knees, and Bradshaw got it to him that time effectively. Well covered, but again, you can throw it downhill a little bit. The defensive back doesn't even see it. This is a real Bradshaw throw. Notice how that finger is all the way back on the point. Looks away just long enough to come back. He really rifled this one. Mike McCoy, the Green Bay defender, and Rocky Blyer has replaced Franco Harris as a Pittsburgh running back. Reliable Rocky. Sit down to about the 11. Jim, Jim Gueno had a pretty good shot at him, number 51, I think. Let's see if the hole is filled up. Thornton loves to cut back and go straight. And again, that's not a bad way to run against the 34. Gueno just overran the play, and Thornton cut back behind him. Ezra Johnson finally made the stop. Watch 51. Third and four. Ball's at the 11. Franco Harris back in there with Thornton. Bradshaw fires incomplete. Intended for Benny Cunningham. Johnny Gray was back there with him. So was Kurt Allerman. Mike Webster, the big center, went down and jumped up and down like there was going to be interference there. But Bradshaw did not cut that ball loose. That ball was was really in a, a wiggler. Here it is. He gets good time. Franco's gone through clear to the right side. Whether that ball was tipped or not, I don't know. It looked like the person back there was making some contact. Who's that? Kurt Allerman. Allerman, right. So Bradshaw, 10 out of 22, has third and four facing him right now. Minus scrimmage, the Green Bay 11. Packers leading by two. Three wide receivers. Harris and Thornton behind Bradshaw. The inside hand off to Franco. Franco's got a first down at the one. Gray made the tackle. Remember the great run in Super Bowl 13, I think it was, after a problem between Dallas and Pittsburgh. They came back with a quick trap. And number 32 just broke it right up the middle against the Cowboys and really broke their heart that day. But you get him near that end zone. He's one of the great runners that inside the five, he goes for the six. Key block here by Ted Peterson, number 66, coming across the middle. That's what Franco needs to be the third player in the history of this league. They go for 9,000 yards. First and goal from the two. Pittsburgh trying to take the lead. The outside trap is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. You saw Grossman come in from the outside. They used to use John Kolb there. And they would even put Mullen in there one time, uh -huh. didn't they? The big tackle or guard in there. Ezra Johnson is the man who stacked it up. Blyer back in. Thornton comes out. It's an amazing stat to you that all of these Steeler people are Steeler people, that they have no outside acquisitions at all. They either pick up a man that's theirs from the start or they draft them, and that's it. Speaks well for the Roonies. Speaks well for Chuck Noll and his staff and the way they've drafted. Grossman again is lined up on the flank behind Cunningham this time. That's Rocky Blyer. He didn't get in. Johnny Gray again to come up and make the tackle from his safety spot. Looking down the line. Packer defense only given up seven touchdowns rushing, and they filled the hole. Somebody came up with the secondary. Johnny Gray, huh? Man, that's a good plug job. Good play by Johnny Gray. Third and goal from the one. Yeah, 
of Ray Penny lined up as a tight end down. Grossman comes in motion. Bradshaw looking. Goes behind the intended receiver, Penny Cunningham. Rocky Blyer was 20 yards away from anybody and wide open in the end zone. As soon as he left the line of scrimmage, number 20 is gone now from your scene here. Franco sets up to pick it up. I believe Bradshaw got turned away because he got the big, big pressure by Terry Jones quickly from that side. Again, Johnny Gray back there on the coverage against Cunningham. They're going for the field goal bar with Colquitt holding. He's missed three extra points. That's about what this is. It's even shorter than an extra point. From the eighth. Pittsburgh takes the lead. 15-14 over Green Bay. But a good stand by the Packers. We have 4.43 left in the third quarter. And it's Pittsburgh 15, Green Bay 14. Here is the play before Barr's field goal. Watch number 20. Liar breaks right out, calls for it, and that's when, as we said, number 63, Terry Jones was making a move from that side and might have cut off the vision of the quarterback. Look at Blyer over there. Wide open by 20 yards, but Bradshaw just didn't see him. Mark Lee back for the Packers. Barr will kick off. The high kick will be handled at about the eight-yard line. They make it the nine by Lee. Finds no place to go. Randy Grossman down to make the tackle. Here's the scoring drive. Nine plays. 41 yards, five minutes, one second. And Barr has two notches on the belt today, huh? Right. Well, I'll tell you, I watched him before the game, and he really felt badly about the way he was kicking it. And so did Dick Hoke and the people that were watching it. <laughs> that one was from 18 yards, the other from 27. And that has given Pittsburgh the lead, 15-14 over Green Bay. Packers have the football. Their own 27. Dickey looks, and Dickey goes down to the grass for Joe Green. That's Joe Green's first sack of the year in 1980. Some effort, huh? He said something about character and physical intimidation. Watch the left part of your screen. Boy, good effort. He split McCarran and the guard. Dickey knows it's over, at least for now. Buffalo in the third quarter, leading Atlanta now 17-14. Both teams trying to stay in first place, at least tied. Dickey gives quickly to Eddie Lee Ivory, who gets out to about the 25, back almost to the original line of scrimmage, Ivory. before he's tripped up by L.C. Greenwood. Stopped by Greenwood. Set the all-time NCAA rushing record, didn't he, at Georgia Tech against uh, the Air Force? For a single game. How much was that, I suppose? Well over 200 yards. I'm, I've forgotten exactly how much it was. I think it was close to 300. I think it was. My entire career. Look at this score. Huh? That is a correction from what we told you a minute ago. Atlanta ahead of Buffalo, 17-14. Third down, just over 10. Steelers in a blitz. Dickey has Lofton. He has him open. Enough for a first down. Good pattern and a good throw. Lofton's got 4-4 four, four speed, and he's got height. He's very slender, but he's always under control. He's a little bit like Ahmad Rashad in that he doesn't force quickly with great bursts of speed. He comes down and just breaks off the perfect, perfect pattern on you. Great hands, and as you've seen just before the halftime, he will take punishment to make the catch. Let's see how the blocking was. They're doubling on Joe Green. McCarran has him now. Good throw right on by Dickey. Shell and Thomas knock him out of bounds. First down, Green Bay. Out to the 45. Green Bay has a little breathing room at the moment. San Diego, boy, can they move it. 24-7 over Cincinnati. John Jefferson scored the last touchdown. He always seems to be open. Pass is thrown away by Dickey, intended for Ellis, but Jack Ham was right with him. Dickey is now 10 of 23 for 191 yards. Boy, being able to throw that ball away is, is almost as important for a quarterback in this league as pulling the trigger on a touchdown pass, isn't it? Something that sometimes takes a young quarterback three or four years to learn. Look into his face. He looks like Mac Davis, the singer that 
played a quarterback in the football field. That's what they call him. <laughs> they can't tell you what he says back. Lofton swings upfield. Pass to Ivory is complete. Lauren Cage takes him down. Nicky Fast to Ivory. Stopped by Cage. Ivory can catch the ball. He had 11 catches in one game this year. It was against Tampa Bay. But he's got good sense, has good balance. It's a pretty good call. I think he gets a big rush, too. Slip the both backs out of the backfield. Wow, and Gary Dunn comes right over the top. Make it third and two for Dickey and the Packers. Four out of ten on third down. They give to Ivory. Eddie Lee Ivory has a first down in Pittsburgh territory. Ivory. Mike Wagner made the tackle, but he's all the way to the 40-yard line. Let's watch the play. It's a strong side running play. They pull everybody. Look at Ellis go in and fill on Dirt Winston to make a good block on the middle linebacker. Tell you, for a rookie fullback, Ellis does a good job. He blocks. From Missouri. Lofton comes left. Thompson goes right. First down, Packers at the Green Bay 40. They're on the move. Less than two minutes left in the third quarter. They put Kaufman in motion. They want to draw play to Ivory. About a yard, certainly no more. Giants are finally on the scoreboard. 23 to 6 it is. Tampa Bay leading. Woeful days for the Giants. I've got a woeful statistic. I finally got the Green Bay book out, and Eddie Lee Ivory at Georgia Tech ran up 356 yards and 26 carries against the Air Force Academy. In one game? In one game. Sounds like back-to-back, -back, home and away or something. Yeah. I guess the altitude had something to do with it. Is that the Air Force? Middleton in the game now. Hoffman again swings in motion. Dickey again will throw. The blitz is on, and down goes Dickey. Pittsburgh has found their pass rush. The blitz comes from the right side. I think it's Taves that comes from this outside, isn't That's it? That's right, 51. He's always in on passing situations, at least when they can get him in there. Greenwood came from the inside. Watch 68 appear. Left side of your picture. They're twisting. They're trying to occupy people and clear it off. Greenwood and company. Pittsburgh, three sacks, Green Bay two. So it'll be third down. 17 for a first. Three man rush this time. And now they blitz again. Dickey has Lofton, shy of a first down, but he might be in field goal range. Donnie Shell had him covered as well as you could do it. With the blitz now, you take a lot of help away from the secondary. And 31 was right on 80's back. And Lofton somehow just, at the moment of truth, just catches that ball, makes sure, and the ball was perfectly thrown. Remember when Dickey came out of Kansas State and Houston drafted he and Pastorini the same year? That was... Quite a time for quarterbacks, wasn't it? There is Bernie, but Bart Starr has decided no field goal. It would be from 50 yards out. He may change his mind as they change into the field. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Pittsburgh 15, Green Bay 14. We'll have more time to discuss what they want to do. The conference is over, and Green Bay has still decided that this might be a little far for Bernie. It would be 50 yards. So Lim Dickey is back, and they'll go with an offensive play. They need two, fourth think, down. Think they'll dump it to a back on a pass play? Not a bad idea. Lim Dickey has Lofton and Thompson both lined up to the right. Now he starts Thompson in motion left. And a throw it. Let's throw it for Ellis. No good. Steelers all over him. Taves. And Dennis Winston. Good defense. They came in from both sides. Let's see how close this man in motion has gone by. See Donnie Shell going with him. LC gets pinched, but gets some penetration. 
just darn good hustle on defense. And so the Steelers will take over. Terry Bradshaw, the offensive unit back. They lead by one point, 15-14. <laughs> Got to be happier than that. No, he's just had something to eat. <laughs> Bradshaw batted down, intended for Smith, as he looked quickly to the outside and then tried to throw it there. A year ago, the Steelers, with Bradshaw at the controls, were the number one scoring team in the fourth period. And the last two weeks, they've been outscored 33 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Speaking of scores, Atlanta. 20 to 14, a 50 yard field goal by Mazzetti. Chiefs 24 21 over Baltimore. San Diego moving over Cincinnati 31 to 7. A very confused play. Fumble. Ball just fell out of Bradshaw's hands. He was as shocked as anybody else that he had to run. Flags down everywhere. Franco Harris went in motion up toward the line of scrimmage. Looked like everybody had set. He's allowed to do that as long as he's going parallel or away from the thing at the snap. But it did look like there was something sort of scrunched up about it, huh? Let's watch it again. Oh, well, the two guys in motion. Two. <laughs> that's Canadian. That is not legal. That's Canadian football at its best. <laughs> Illegal shift. Two men moving at the same time. Dallas 10. Cardinals 7. Second quarter. Septiana field goal. The Steelers have only scored 35 points all year long in the fourth quarter of play. This would be a big day for them to change that if they're going to win it. Second and 15. Sid Thornton manages to hang on to the ball. Allerman almost knocked it loose. Cincinnati beat the Steelers twice. And Green Bay beat Cincinnati. Strange things. It's what Burt Bell was always looking for, right? When we played, we just couldn't provide it, but he was always looking for it. <laughs> just didn't play as often. Thank God for that. Third and 15. Just over 14 minutes left to play. Steelers up by one. Packers in a four-man front now. Rushes on Bradshaw. He steps up and fires. Bell. To the 33-yard line of Green Bay. Strike from Bradshaw. But what a strike. The great thing was that he hit Theo Bell right in stride. Theo had to do nothing except make the run, stay together, and the ball will come right into his arm. A great step up by Bradshaw. He took a little off of it, made sure, and Bell didn't even have to break stride. That really breaks the hearts of the defenders. Estes Hood finally makes the stop, and it wasn't easy. That sure does break your heart. You remember it was third and 15. It looked like the Packers would be in good shape, and the Steelers snap right back at him. This is Sid Thornton. Twisting around for a couple. Not much develops. Allerman again on the tackle. And Steve Luke. Boy, does that secondary for the package. Do they come up and bang you there? Flyer out. Franco Harris back in. It's a lot easier with man-to-man -man defenses. And of course, Chuck Knowles an old man-to-man -man defensive person, but it's a lot easier to come up and support when you're limited only to one receiver that gives you your clue, you know, your key. Gosh, remember what a disastrous first year he had here? Won one game? One in 13. Yep. Second and seven. Franco Harris. Perhaps two more. I heard that pop all the way up here. Somebody really took a shot. Terry Jones, I think. Let's see if it was number 63. You're right behind the Packers safety men. Well, they filled that hole. The linebacker, that Cumbie from Oklahoma, put his head down and just gave himself up. Bart Starr's Packer team trails by one, 
That safety, that snap over the punter's head looms bigger and bigger, doesn't it? Got to get the corners covered now if he throws the ball. Third down. Not going to throw. It's going to Harris. And Harris is tripped up shy of a first down. Now, see what happens to Mr. Barr. Cumbie's down. Young, or is that Douglas down? That's Cumbie. I believe it's Cumbie. It looked like... Well, the young man from Oklahoma, he missed a lot of preseason time with slight injuries, but he can fly with that thing out of the 34. Douglas. Well, I'm sorry. That's Douglas okay. made the tackle. There's Cumbie coming up on McGriff. McGriff just hit him a good legal shot. Cumbie still gets into it. Franco looked like he might have been shaken up, too, and then Douglas does finish him off. We'll return to Three Rivers Stadium after this word from your local station. There's the book on Matt Barr, but he's not in the game. They're going to go for the first down. Fourth. And between one and two. Pitch out to Frank Harris. He'll have it. He just dives underneath the pile and gets the first down. All or nothing at all, right? Go for it. The toss play to the premier running back and let him find some place to go and he just had to head for contact and just get the first he wasn't trying to break any records or anything else just get me past the sticks and he is shaken up after that effort seven more yards required to reach that plateau watch him just put his head down and make sure he's got the first Grossman's gone man in motion pull to the outside Ezra Johnson is following it Allerman got a pretty good play on that 60 tripped him up. That's Alderman. Everybody's working the outside. What Thornton do? He took the cornerback, knocked him out. Pittsburgh first down as Franco Harris is being checked on right now. They brought the sticks out to measure. Look when he tried to play against Oakland in the playoff game with fractured, broken ribs. Yep. He got the first. Curtis Dickey has just scored a touchdown for Baltimore to put them back ahead of Kansas City. 28-24. Franco comes off. Cardinals have tied Dallas at 10-10. Neil O'Donohue, a 42-yard field goal to make them even. Ball at the 23. 10-45 left to play. Blyer has taken Harris's place. Steelers by one. Sid Inside the 20. Bueno. Looks like uh, Pittsburgh's beginning to lean on him right now. Green Bay has had so many injuries in this one game that a lot of, I'm not saying this in a disparaging way, but a lot of second line people are now in there and they're probably not really familiar with, with the day to day defense. And he's going to maybe run it a little bit and try to use the clock too. Packers have now lost six players. Smith split out to the left, Swan to the right, second down, seven. Hand off to Thornton straight ahead. A little shoving match developing now with McGriff and Ezra Johnson. <laughs> McGriff is one of the great stories, though. The last person taken in the draft, number 333, rolled around in Canada for a few weeks. They couldn't use him because their, the American quota was used up. They say, we got a guy up here that can play somewhere with Corson and a lot of people going down. Uh, looks like a pretty good choice. He's played well today. He is a load, though, and he's big. He used to weigh, I think, uh, 287. <laughs> They've trimmed him down. It's 261 now. Third down, six. Packers, a lot of men up front. Showing pressure against Bradshaw. Picked off, picked oh. off. What a catch intended for Grossman. Johnny Gray made one of the most spectacular interceptions you'll ever see. Number four for 24. Man, this one was looked like a touchdown. People were lined up for the extra point for Pittsburgh. Throw is a little bit high, but this is the way it should be. Gray makes all the time up as the ball is coming down. Boy, that's fantastic. 
Matt Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Terry can't believe it. Nobody can. Grossman looked open, and Johnny Gray just shut it off with a great in interception. After he's had the ball at the 20, pitches back to Ivory. Broken down quickly by Robin Cole. Ivory. And on the Green Bay side of the line of scrimmage, a lot of people think that... Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Terry can't believe it. Nobody can. Grossman looked open, and Johnny Gray just shut it off with a great in interception. After he's had the ball at the 20, pitches back to Ivory. Broken down quickly by Robin Cole. Ivory. And on the Green Bay side of the line of scrimmage, a lot of people think that if uh, Pittsburgh would change their philosophy after this season for some reason and go to a 34, that with their linebackers, with Lambert, Robin Cole, Dirk Winston, Jack Hamm, and other people, that they could play the 34 probably as well as anybody ever did. All those linebackers are very, very mobile. Mean. Second and 12. Lofton swings out in motion, and Dickey gives out to Ellis with a blocker in front. Ellis swings out of bounds. After about an eight-yard pickup, it's Jack Ham and Mike Wagner who heard him out. Rodkowski told us that his son is coaching, part-time coaching at Missouri, and when Zeke went down there to work out some other people and all, uh, his, his son said, take a look at our fullback, this guy. So Zeke put the clock on him and let him do a few exercises, and Ellis looks like one of the real sleepers. After a, they saw him work out in Green Bay, Zeke said to Bart Starr, we cannot let an athlete like this get out of town. They've been rewarded for that judgment. On third down, Dickey drops again. Rash is intended for Kaufman. It's knocked away. Donnie Shell made the hit that jarred the ball loose. One of the great tacklers that's played the secondary, safety man Donnie Shell. Watch 31 just as the ball gets there, maybe even a little earlier, which is all right, too, if you get away with it. Theo Bell back deep for Pittsburgh. David Beverly. Are they going to put pressure on uh, David? I'm sure he's already feeling pressure. Good snap this time. Beverly, a high kick. Bell will not fair catch. And now he decides that's a good idea, and I agree with him. Wise choice. So the Steelers take over. And their own 46, still leading by one point with 8.05 left to play. First and 10, Pittsburgh ball. They'll operate from the 46-yard line. Sid Thornton and Rocky Wild. Look at Webster. <laughs> Hand off is to Thornton, who's hit just as soon as he gets it. Under eight minutes left now. A good drive by Pittsburgh in points, and they would put it away. Webster goes through. They're trying to trap Young Terry Jones, who didn't take it at all. He was so quick, he beat, he beat John Culp's block from the outside. Boy, he's done a job filling in for Charles Johnson at nose. He really has. Second and 10. No gain. Looking for a pass. Bradshaw's 10 out of 25. Packers do not blitz. They don't get much of a rush either. The throw is intended for Smith. He caught the pass. But a penalty marker goes down. Mike McCoy was the Green Bay defender. I believe they're going to. McCoy thinks that there was a push off by the receiver. Third down. Yeah, they're going to call McCoy, it looks like. Now they say the pass was incomplete. Must have bounced off the artificial turf. On the play. Straight drop back. This means everybody in that line of scrimmage. Webster goes over with. Young Terry Jones. Pretty good pass, a little bit underthrown. Defense, but... illegal contact, number 24. That's an automatic first down. There's the flag coming flying across your screen. It'll be a first hand. That's an automatic first down. Johnny Gray got the call, but if any secondary has ever played well, these four guys for Ross Fickner have really played it today. 
First down, Steelers just across midfield. 15 14 score. Bradshaw throws back on the tight end screen to Cunningham. Cunningham can't get out of the grasp of uh, Mike Douglas. 49ers defeating or beating the Lions in the fourth quarter. 13 10. That game is not over. Some tackle there. Douglas lets this guy at 240 pounds get away, and Cunningham is a moose. Second down and three. Second and two. Smith comes left. Swan goes out wide to the right. Bradshaw operating from the Packer 42 yard line. Clock running. Pitches out to Blyer. Blyer swinging downfield. Rocky Blyer. Inside the 25 to the 23, knocked out by Johnny Gray. Meyer comes in with a 4.4 average. And as we were talking to people from Green Bay, they said the guy never makes a mistake. He runs everything well, has great feet, good balance. I don't care if he's been here since the franchise opened in 1933. Rocky Blyer can play. Look at him follow his blockers. Brown on the outside. That's his longest run of the year. Nice guy to have around. Tight situation. Oh, boy. Another first down for Pittsburgh as they're starting to roll a little bit now. That Green Bay defense has been out there a long time. This will be Blyer again. Rocky is pulled down this time after a pickup of about five by Johnny Gray. Secondary arises again for Green Bay. That was a heck of a play. They've had to make a lot of tackles. Six yards for Blyer, make it second and four. Here it is. You see young Terry Jones trying to get out there. Here's McGriff working on Douglas, gets a good block. Look at these safety men come into it. McCoy, the quarterback, too. Was a good block by McGriff, wasn't it? Stayed on his feet, too. At the 16. First, down to about the 10. Steve Luke had to make the tackle almost every time it's somebody in the secondary. It was a great toss play, and this play is run by Pittsburgh. They toss it almost a forward pass. It's so lateral. They get that 255 pound Brown out in front of it. It's 33 yards rushing for Rocky Blyer. Some play by, by Steve Luke, the safety man. First down at the 11 for Pittsburgh. They lead by one, the clock still in their favor. Five minutes, 40 seconds left to play. Pittsburgh trying to break a losing streak. Packers trying to keep their momentum going. Here's Blyer again inside the five to the four. Gray again on the tackle. Rocky Blyer, who says this is his last season as a Steeler. I saw him do a public service announcement this morning for Big Brothers or something. He's very active around town, but he's really active in the fourth quarter. Wow. The Bucks 30, the Giants 6 in the fourth quarter. Second and three. He'll operate from the four-yard line. Bradshaw looks and throws. Touchdown, Rocky Blyer. His longest run of the year and his first touchdown catch of the year. And not a bad time to get it. If the extra point is good, they lead by eight. And there are no two-point conversions in this league. Here's the touchdown again. Bradshaw will look over a lot of different directions. He wanted to go to the outside receivers. Oh, strike. Barr with Cole quit holding. Eight points it is. Steelers 22, Packers 14. We have four minutes and 51 seconds left to play in this contest. And Pittsburgh now in a commanding position. Mark 
Lee is a deep man. Mars kick chases it back to the goal line. Now he comes out with it. Lee with no place to go is hit by Grossman. And then the rest of the special team really swarmed. Calvin Sweeney was there. So was J.T. Thomas, Grossman. Did you hear the crowd here at Three Rivers Roar on the kickoff? These old fans have been around here watching football so long they know when it's important to get that kick all the way to the goal line. They know football pretty well. That's the reason they boo once in a while. They're used to winners lately. Lynn Dickey a little bit late getting into the huddle. It's first and 10 Green Bay. Their own 16 yard line. 440 left on the school board clock. They're down by eight points. play he does out to Ellis oh boy a gang met him led by Ron Johnson Dennis Winston also in on the tackle but a six yard pickup excuse me Lynn Dickey is 15 of 28 for 222 yards two touchdowns and the pack hasn't been able to get on that board in the second half or keep the ball for big chunks of time you know it's been tough it's hard on your defense when that happens Second down, five yards in for first. And a scrimmage at the 20. There goes Kaufman in motion. Steelers really fire off the ball and too quickly. Here's Lofton. Made the reception, but Pittsburgh was offside. Late flag, but it looked like Joe Green and a couple of people just humped it up and went on count one or point eight nine. Well, they get after you like that. Look at Dickey. He can feel it. I was talking to Wagner, the great safety man for the Steelers, about tall quarterbacks having an advantage. He said it helps us, too, because we can see them. He said, Sight from Cleveland gets in behind the big guys, and all of a sudden the ball just pops out, and your receiver has it. You can't read his eyes or anything, so they Defense, like to read tall offside receivers. Offside number 75. It was Joe Green. It was offside. I guess that would be Is tough on a defensive back if you can't see where the ball's coming from. And you've got to read the eyes, you know, especially in a zone situation. That's the only way you can keep dropping back and read the quarterback. Thompson comes out to the right. Lofton goes left. Hoffman now moves back into the backfield. The handoff is to Ellis. A big hole. He'll have the first down. Ellis. Dennis Winston made the tackle, but Ellis. Winston. With a good run. Yeah. Guy's done First some job 10, keeping this offense alive. You know, there hasn't been a lot of running room in this 33. second half. He seems to be very cool and together. Continues to look over at Zeke Bratkowski to get the offensive thoughts coordinated. <laughs> Pittsburgh showing a blitz. Pass from Dickey to Andre Thompson. Just shy of a first down as Donnie Shell made the tackle. If you cut off uh, Lofton, Andre Thompson will catch eight balls against you. That's the, whatever that the defense decides to give them that day, they go to the other one. And as we've said before, the outside receivers on both teams in this game will catch it in traffic. Second and about two. Minus scrimmage to 41. 22 to 14 to score. Pittsburgh leads Green Bay. Nicky outside to Ellis again. Looking for some running room and not finding much. In fact, he lost a yard or two. Jack Ham stopped him. Some tackle by Ham, huh? Doesn't have to crunch you all the time. It's just so firm that you just end up sitting down. Not by Ham. Gary Danielson, the Lions quarterback, just bootlegged one in. And Detroit leads San Francisco 17-13. Backers used a timeout. They have two left. Two minutes, 12 seconds left in the school board clock. Pittsburgh leading by eight points. Tonight, a CBS News special report anchored by Dan Rather that will focus on today's developments in which Iran has agreed to the release of the hostages 
if the Ayatollah Khomeini's conditions are met. That's tonight. CBS News special. Third and two for Green Bay. Ellis and Ivory, the running backs, everybody jammed together right in the middle. Dickey. Ivory. He has the first down and more out to the 47. I'm wondering why Green Bay burned a timeout with 2.12. They're getting ready to get an automatic one at the two-minute warning. But maybe they wanted to make sure of this play. Give it to number 40 is not too bad a choice. Does he keep it digging? Good block by Goforth and a good block by Ellis in front of him to set up that first down. So we have two minutes remaining in this contest and Pittsburgh ahead by eight points. Two minutes left to play. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh. The Steelers 22, Green Bay 14. Steelers must feel they have to win six at least of the eight in their last game of the season with San Diego. They are four and four. First and ten. Dickey with good protection. Pass almost picked off by Jack Ham. Intended for Thompson. He's, he's got work, work gloves on. No wonder he couldn't catch it. What kind of gloves is he working with then? That Atlanta team has suddenly become very difficult to defeat, haven't they? We'll find out next week in St. Louis, huh? St. Louis and Dallas were tied 10-10 the last time we saw. There goes his golf glove. He just took the, both gloves off. Maybe he thinks if he hadn't had those gloves on, he would have picked that off. He gave him to Stan Javi, the official. That'll be the last time you'll see those. <laughs> Stan's retiring after this year. He's done a great job. He's a great official. No offside. Dickey looking and throwing. Has his tight end, Kaufman. Down to about the 36-yard line. Donnie Shell wraps him up. Dickey, a good scrambling job that time. It's Kaufman's second catch. Boy, this is a good throw because he gets a lot of heat. Joe Green and Elsie Greenwood coming by. Done from behind. Kaufman's a pretty steady hand. We're in the middle of a Green Bay timeout right now. This is another replay, another angle at that last play. Kaufman does a good job to get away from Shell. Now Green Bay will have one more timeout left is all, right? They burned one before the two-minute, and now this one. Dickey over with Bart. Next week here on CBS, Dallas, New York, Washington, Chicago. We'll have a chance, as you mentioned, to look at Atlanta as they go to St. Louis, Detroit, Minnesota. San Francisco, Green Bay, and Philadelphia at New Orleans. Green Bay has a pretty good schedule the rest of the way. We were looking at it. They got San Francisco next and all, but but they have some people in there that they can work on. Tampa Bay. A lot of people in the division left to play. Of course, that's been the Steeler problem. They're one in three in this division, so there are no more losses accounted for. You'll have to go to Chuck Noll. Pittsburgh is at Tampa next week. He's stern but fun, isn't he? <laughs> this is the classical music is a gourmet but I'll tell you on game day he's he's a rough customer former guard linebacker with the Cleveland Browns very steady job amazing that none of the members of his first coaching staff are still here so he's not only rebuilt the team he's rebuilt his coaching staff Kaufman swings in motion to the right uh, Dickey will throw again if he has time. Tries to go over the top. Intended for Eddie Lee Ivory. Ham was right out there in the middle of things, and Dickey was under severe pressure. Slip screen, and again, the veteran defense that you're facing, they've seen it so many different times, and Ham has the gloves off, so they were in pretty good shape for that one. <laughs> What a job the Packers have done. I would never believe that they would come in here, and they haven't backed off from the Steelers since the, they came out for calisthenics. They had them down at one point. Fell behind early after that safety. No flat. Kaufman again. Has another Green Bay first down. Fights inside the 20. Wagner made the tackle. But they'll move the sticks again. 
Wagner. They probably won't waste one now. We'll have to quickly show you this one. Again, Dickey is in there, and the Steelers are coming like mad. He had somebody draped around him when he threw that one. Another great catch, and watch the effort on the end of this. Quick lineup with just over a minute left to play. Dickey back. Caught by Ivory, who ducks down inside the 14. Got to take it now. No matter what happens, you got to take it now. They did. The last time out. Ivory's limping a little bit. He had the total knee job, missed all of last year. He has played some game himself. Bob Stenner, the producer today. Sandy Grossman, the director, the executive producer. Charles Milton, the third. Is that Randy Grossman or Sandy Grossman? That's Sandy. Okay. Joni Vetrano. She's the voice in our headset. One of them. <laughs> Star Dickey still in conversation. Was there anybody better in this situation than Bart Starr, though, when, when the Lombardi football program was at full flight? Is that incredible in those days? A lot of people over the years have said they would have liked for the Packer teams of the 60s to have faced the Steeler teams of the 70s. Two of the best, certainly, in their heyday years of all. Bart would say things to you on the field, though, like, uh, Tom, you're a good player. You don't have to play that way. <laughs> say, well, mind your own what business, he... but tell Cherry hello, you know. What did he mean by that, you think? Well, I was usually trying to cause some kind of a problem for him, which wasn't easy. None of these scores, by the way, that we're giving to you are final scores. That's fourth quarter, 31-24, Baltimore. Colts can put some points on the board, too. He's healthy this year, Burt Jones is. Ivory's been held at 32 yards on 12 carries. The Steelers have been really socking. Second and six, clock stop with 51 seconds left to play. Green Bay with no more timeouts. And Dickey back to throw, looking for Thompson in the end zone corner. Nothing to it. Lofton ran a corner to the other side, and Blunt had him. You're probably going to get a double. They've got to decide. They've got to double both outside receivers and then try to control Kaufman from the inside with a, an under back or two. And don't forget about Mr. Ellis, who has made two spectacular touchdown catches today. Ivory still in there, too. Atlanta rolling now. 30 to 14 over Buffalo. Atlanta trying to stay in a first place tie with Los Angeles in the NFC West. Dickey, touchdown to Thompson, and what a spectacular catch that was. Did he get up in the air? He jumped over J.T. Thomas. I don't know how Andre Thompson caught this. He's got the ball. I don't blame him. The one point's going to be a big one. Good throw. Look at this catch. People in Green Bay, that is your receiver. You've got several of them, but that was outstanding. That makes it 22-20. Beverly Holden. Get ready for your onside kick. Coming up very shortly. Our extra point is blocked. L.C. Greenwood. I think we can still prepare for the onside I kick, think huh? We certainly can. Well, you think about some of the ways that the Packers have lost games this year. Here's the touchdown pass again. That spectacular catch by Thompson, certainly worth viewing a couple of times. Talk about coordination and gifted athletes. Here's Bernie's extra point attempt. They'll Greenwood see. is up high. Oh, like he came through a revolving door. They let him right through there. Was there any pulling or holding out or anything like that? You can't do that. It's against the rules, right? <laughs> What about the onside kick now? You probably did a lot of this with the Giants your day, did you? I've done it uh, quite a few times, yeah. Was a left-hander. Uh, I never did it left-footed, though. <laughs> you think back to the early part of this game, if they were able to snap the ball accurately to the putter, the score would be 20-20. 
And of course they had another bad snap which Pittsburgh turned into a touchdown shortly after that. So Pitch. impressed with the Packers as a team though the oh, way they yeah. feel about the game of football and themselves it's, it's very satisfying I'm sure. Here comes the bouncer. Pittsburgh stays on it. Dwayne Woodruff did exactly the same thing got his body in front of the ball made sure he had it and covered it up. This is the way left footers do it. Woodruff it has to go 10 yards it did. You put all your uh, good infielders up there George Brett Boa I saw all of them up front there to make sure they could catch it. First and 10 for the third ball the Green Bay 22 20. Bradshaw back did not look sharp all the time, but a couple of throws were, were truly vintage Bradshaw, weren't they? A couple of them. And of course, they got a stirring performance when they really needed it for the last touchdown by Rocky Blyer. I'll never forget, though, how the Steelers as a team handled the pressure of the Super Bowl this year in Pasadena. The, their hotel looked like a beehive. You know, the, the players couldn't even go out and get a sandwich without having a thousand people want their autograph or whatever, and uh, they handle it beautifully. Well, they're sort of used to it. Here comes Bart Starr over to say. Congratulations to Chuck Noll. Pittsburgh, the victor, 22-20, but certainly the Packers acquitted themselves very, very well. I used to see him jog off like that with a lot of victories. I think he won something today, don't you? So Pittsburgh's record now is five and four. Green Bay drops to three, five and one. From Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh and for Tom Brookshire.